sen chumbukai. Tu rey uyu borom, jasna pir so kubuge fisi bir gamia bi, dawal fofo sa quality jasna. Your number one stop shop. Ana sama jigeni, dama bagingen jakma sen no po garbi. Ndakte quality jasna, amal nen len, I till you touch, dala, pause, abaya yu yu white, amal nen len, I bore da yu rafet, bore da yu hamne pur gurni ra, ak pur jigeni. Amal nen len body scrub yu hamne ni da fai da far sen yaram bam nice, white, fate un fa dewi. Ana sama jiak yu parai, quality jasna, amal nen len fa ande churai, churai yu neh, house spray, ak bepo khetu bah bah, pur sen bir neg. Damane, atum brand ji, usa jeker mere kune. Yow la neh, nakhte kuwari fi jasna nyo na si deke bi, pou defar se yi. Makeup artisi, bayi nyen ganaw. Nyung len fa amal ay makeup product yu quality. Wahu len legi ni Fufa sa Westfield, Jakarlok Monument bi. Wala, nga joko kuwari fi jasna si 250-0124. Ak kuwari fi jasna, taral sa bopu, taral sa neg, white, begel sa alaji as. Abib kitir nak, mumoi barang sisa budore de. Kalau len masan saya rafedi, damane nyau cak dog ba. Ada jigi ni, esok kami nak abib kitir mumoi sen harit. Dah tak boleh duga si bir bici kambi. Mungkin amal bepo bagas dengan sokla pun mata le sen san sabi. Damane abib mumrek mula na jai pis, nyau len kosi nyau bu rafed, nyau bu tok, nyau bu ba, white, tegal len si pause, dala, ak aita kayu amut fen. Ana gurni. Wai alaji asik kendurian baik ganau. Abib kitir daflin dia nyawal kaftan yu rafet. Tali cik ganan niah moy. Abib kitir dia nyawi nyawi mak, ag nyawi kare. Kore terenji. Abib kitir baram sizo budore bi lepulum dogut. Nyawa badesna. Kor nak daulen legi ni dem seti abib kitir fufa sama setalin ding bi. Walang yang jokok momsi. Seven three six four five six one seven three six four five six one. Walang yang okasi. Three four nine two one nine eight three four nine two one nine eight. Ak adib kitir. Kui dora man kui saga. White. Barom sizo bu dora be. Thank you to budget, a citizen budget. I think this is a, a key step in terms of budget process. Uh, I think. Uh, when we look at the concept of open budget, which indeed uh, once it uh, looks at how uh, the population opinion is included in the uh, budget process, uh, both in terms of preparation, in terms of access to information on, uh, this is a key uh, step in terms of budget transparency and uh, the concept of uh, open budget is something on which countries are making progress, uh, something which also uh, requires a continuous effort. And I think for the Gambia, uh, perpetuating this exercise of a citizen budget is indeed a key step, a key milestone. And all I can say that is of course, the World Bank uh, is supporting this process, is supporting all government's efforts uh, on the fiscal side, but over speaking on the development of the country. And from the fiscal side, uh, as the Ministry of Finance knows, we have, have, we have been having engaged in very fruitless discussions and I think we are very happy to see that exercise of citizens' budget. Or can say that is let's have a, a fruitful workshop and let's build on this exercise. As I said at the beginning, it's a very important step in terms of uh, building uh, the transparency and the, the credibility of the uh, budget process. Thank you very much. The Honorable Permanent Secretary Moore Esaka, uh, representative from UNDP, 
and my senior Lamin um, Anta from the World Bank, IMF, finance. Sorry about that. <laughs> and then, um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's really a pleasure for me to stand before you here um, to share the excitement that I have um, on behalf of Gambia participate working with the Ministry of Finance under the able leadership of Director Samate. Since 2020, we've been working with the Ministry of Finance in producing a simplified version of the citizens' budget. Um, and honestly speaking, the Ministry have been really open to working with us at Gambia participate. In fact, what they have done this year is um, they call us in a workshop, I think, for two days, and they said, let's work together and identify the contents of the citizens' budget that citizens will be of interest. And they thought it would not be um, best for them to do it as a ministry without engaging the civil society. So for us, it's really a place as a pro-fiscal organization that works on fiscal transparency and accountability to um, contribute towards the development of this citizens' budget. And um, I also, just wanted to say, um, looking at the trend of budget transparency in the Gambia from 2019 to 2021, um, you know, the numbers are speaking for themselves. The Ministry of Finance's performance in 2019 wasn't that good. Um, they scored four out of 100 in terms of fiscal transparency. But after the research, we went to the Ministry of Finance budget director and said, look, um, there are opportunities for us Gambia to improve this transparency. And they were really very open and said, let's work together on this. Between 2019 to 2021, from four, the Ministry of Finance scored a score of 35 out of 100, which means um, 31 points between 2019 and 2020. And then guess what? In all the 120 countries that are assessed in the Open Budget Survey, the highest transparency improver, the one that scored the highest score between 2019 and 2021 is the Gambia. And um, that that goes to say that, you know, um, CSO government collaboration can actually bring out, oh, yes, we have a flip, um, the, the other side of the coin, us as civil society, we could be very stubborn. But I think that is what is more on the spotlight than the collaboration that we do with government increasing fiscal transparency and accountability. And, um, this is not the first time that we've been collaborating with the Ministry of Finance, especially the Budget Directorate. Um, we will be having a series of other engagement that we will be conducting with the Ministry of Finance. Um, from this citizens' budget um, that we have collaborated, we will be going to the communities in early June. Um, but I just wanted to say this is purely Ministry of Finance's activity, right? Um, it is the Ministry of Finance that organized this activity and we are just happy to support the process. We will be going to the communities, engaging the farmers that um, director did talk about and average Gambian people to talk about what do they want to see in the budget. And what we are trying to do this time around with the Minister of Finance, when we have this open budget dialogue, this participatory budgeting mechanism, we wanted to know what is it that citizens are concerned in terms of what is being incorporated in the budget and if the budget is really reflecting their needs and aspirations. But most importantly as well, after the um, this after this budget dialogue, we want the government to come back and then tell the citizens, based on what you have suggested for us to incorporate in our budget and based on the resources that is available, what is feasible, this is what we are able to achieve for this particular fiscal year. And then the orders that you have actually mentioned, we might consider that in the subsequent budget year. So that also would boost the citizens' interest in not only in the budget process, but also paying tax, because when the citizens know that their tax are actually reflecting their lives, they will be more happy to contribute towards the revenue collection of the country, but most importantly as well, to guard that money. Because when they know the money is coming to them, anyone that wanted to sideline the money, it will be the citizens that will be the frontline defenders of that particular act. So. Um, this will be done with the Ministry of Finance. We also have critical sectors, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Agriculture, and Ministry of, um, I guess, uh, Gender will be also be part of this. And, um, you know, I don't want to take most of my time because it's Ramadan and uh, it's almost like, a, looks like a short day, but I just wanted to thank specifically the staff of the Budget Directorate, uh, Fatmata, Abdul Salam, and the team, and my colleagues at Gambia participate, Lamin and Andrew, who've been really working very hard on this document, collaboratively working all the way to 4 a.m. And Mr. Samate, as we always, you know, calling us for 
interview, I mean, uh, discussions make it so the budget is actually, the season's budget is actually perfect. But I also wanted to thank our partner, the um, American government, as well as the U.S. Embassy Banjul, for supporting um, our Sustaining Fiscal Transfer and Accountability Project, where we will be not only engaging the Ministry of Finance, but we have also started engaging the National Assembly in increasing budget oversight, also with the National Audit Office to ensure there is timely preparation of audit, um, and then also the publication of audit documents to be on time. Our interest is for the government to succeed as civil society. And like I always say, if the government succeeds, we, the civil society, also succeed. Um, there is no interest for civil society to fight government. And there is no interest for the government to fight the civil society. So I think where we have that mutual interest, we can work together in achieving this. Yes, we will be um, you know, doing the accountability side, but also a civil society will be bringing in solutions to work with our partners, which is the government. Because when you activate advocacy, your ultimate goal is to achieve a change. And that change button could only be pressed by the decision makers on the table, which are politicians. And to achieve that, we have to really engage them. So we thank the Minister of Finance for really being open. And I also hope that other ministries will uh, follow suit to ensure they work with civil society to increase um, public service delivery, but most importantly, be more transparent on the budget. So thank you very much. To announce the presence of Mr. Bernard Mendy, representing the uh, rest rep for the IMF in the Gambia. Bernard, we were about to give the permanent secretary the final word, but if, if you so please, we'll give you a few minutes to give remarks on this. You can come to the podium for that. You can go ahead. Okay, and that brings us to the uh, <coughs> opening ceremony you know, remarks by the permanent secretary. Ministry of Finance, Mr. Mordsev. Representatives of the development partners, members of the civil society organization. I've also seen somebody from the National Assembly, Dan. You are representing the speaker here. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all other protocols respectfully observed. Each year, the Ministry of Finance prepares and submits national budget in accordance with the relevant public financial management laws to the National Assembly for debate and approval. The approved budget is long, complex, and can be difficult to comprehend. As a result, the citizen's budget is prepared to present the annual government budget in a simple and easily understood language to all the citizens of this country. In doing so, the Ministry of Finance intends to promote transparency. Citizens' budget budgets provide a clear and easily understandable breakdown of government spending, which helps to promote transparency and accountability. Point number two, it will also increase citizens' engagement by presenting budget information in a format that is accessible to the general public. Citizens' budget can help <coughs> increase citizens' engagement in the budget process itself. Point number three, it can also improve decision making. The citizens' budget can help to inform and educate citizens about the trade-offs involved in budget decisions. As you know, economists will always say resources are not finite. So because of that, you need to make some choices, hard choices in where allocations go. And this is what budgeting also is involved. Support advocacy and public debate. Citizens' budget can also be used as a tool for advocacy and uh, st um, stimulating public debate. Ladies and gentlemen, Civil society organizations have a great responsibility given the important role they play in advocacy. 
And I think that has just been adequately represented by Mr. Mar. Because they keep the public informed and uh, also stimulate public debate about relevant matters. As such, your presence here is a first step in raising awareness on the budget, advocating for social inclusion in the budget, and promoting participatory budgets. It is a part of government's initiatives to inform the Gambian citizens of government's priorities. And if we are to avoid the top-down approach, which we are also trying to improve on and uh, encourage participation, you will also seek the participation of people at the grassroots when you are making your budget. The aim is to give them the opportunity to be more involved in government plans and the budget process itself. Ladies and gentlemen, a summarized version of the budget for public understanding of government priorities and projects is very critical. International good practice recommends that governments publish eight budget documents at various points in the budget cycle as a guide to transparency government, and key among them is the citizens' budget. The enacted budget, which is the budget document itself, which is enacted by the National Assembly, and what we call in-year expenditure reports. Mr. Mar has just alluded to the fact that the Gambia has moved by 31% from 2019 to date, which is a significant improvement in terms of ranking. The Directorate of Budget at the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs publishes these key documents on the ministry website for public consumption to enhance public finance governance and also transparency. Recently, the US government's fiscal transparency report 2022 indicates that the government of the Gambia has satisfactorily met the minimum requirement for being receptive to ideas and publishing key budget information. I think that is the progress Mr. Mann has just also recognized. To consolidate these gains, the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs has acquired an improved budgeting model referred to as the Centralized Budgeting Management System, CBMS. The aim is to facilitate better integration of development planning and the budget. As we speak, there is a disjoint between the plans and the budget. And uh, we will want to make sure we improve on that so that what is reflected in the plans are trans trans translated into the national budget. The aim is to facilitate better integration of development planning and the budget. This will also enhance and the timely and quality production of financial and non-financial information as required by international good practice. When you execute the budget, you also are supposed to be generating periodic reports, which could be used to analyze the budget internally or even to compare the country's budget with best practice across the globe. I will take this opportunity to express our sincere gratitude and appreciation to our development partners for their continuous support. And in particular, I will want to mention, make a special mention of UNDP for sponsoring this event. Government is committed to implement its public financial management reform agenda to promote transparency and accountability in the government. My sincere gratitude and appreciation also goes to Gambian participants, Gambia participants, a civil society organization for their valuable collaboration with the Directorate of Budget for the production of the citizens' budget. This has enhanced the content and graphic design of the document. I'll also implore 
on all participants to take this opportunity to highlight some of their concerns for the 2024 budget cycle. On this note, I will finally declare this launching and discussion of the 2023 Citizen Budget Edition officially open. I thank you all for your attention. Based on the dialogue last year, we organized a dialogue last year uh, with civil society with you guys, and we've had over 50 participants. And we've also had discussions on um, the critical sectors, um, and also were able to distribute um, copies of this citizens' budget um, to civil society. We also um, followed up the sessions with um, radio talk shows. Right, and this was um, in partnership with the initiative for um, the promotion of democracy and governance. Right, and I think they are here represented today. So, um, so during the discussions, there were some questions raised. There were some questions raised, and these are the summaries we were able to get. So, uh, structuring the debt. So, um, moving or negotiating to have short-term debts being moved to long-term, right? And also um, having periodic um, debt caps. So we're calling them debt ceilings, at least to minimize our debt contraction. And also the final thing is to go for concessionary elements or concessionary loans, right? Instead of just going for open-ended loans, right? So these are maybe loans we can have um, more um, favorable terms, you know, as a country. So we also um, have um, a policy to go for grants instead of loans. So that's what we're doing in terms of debt sustainability. So another question was um, what policies we have um, to increase tax, right? Um, so some of the things, um, policies we're looking at is to um, maybe have taxes, introduce six sin taxes. We already have one, so uh, maybe, on um, cigarette tax, you know, smoking tax. So these are things we're looking at. And we're also looking at special investment certificates um, in terms of um, generating revenue. Um, so what are the connections between gender mainstreaming and um, program-based budgeting? So program-based budgeting is something we're looking at, right? So um, it's maybe preparing your budget based on um, particular programs you want to implement. So it's more like having projects you want to implement and then um, dedicating a specific portion of the budget towards these um, um, projects. So that's something we've already started. So how do we link it to gender? Um, gender? What policies are we having um, to promote um, or to integrate gender issues? Hmm? So um, at the moment, currently, we don't have anything of that, but um, where I said um, we're Work, there's no framework, but we're working with the IMF to see um, well what we can do moving forward. We've already started discussions with the fund, so um, hopefully we'll get something done going forward. Um, so what another question is also related to gender. Um, what is the exact number of gender units um, and where they're located? So currently we only have the um, um, gender women's bureau at the Ministry of Gender. So um, we'll just say we only have one unit. So, but I guess going forward, we'll also um, try to improve on that. Um, there was also a question on um, how much of the budget goes directly to creating jobs. Um, this is a, well, complicated one because um, we really don't have the data with respect to the job creation, but we can see the budget is partly channeled toward um, improving development and also maybe creating job opportunities. But just to give an example, um, there's this um, project on the, the Ministry of Youth and Sports called the Gambia Songhai Initiative, right? And last year we had um, about 17 million dedicated to this um, project, right? And at the moment, we the response we receive from them is that they're employing um, 25 people. So that's just one example, but we have others uh, totaling amounting to about 3.1 billion, but we don't have the specifics on the types of, um, on the amount of jobs created. So maybe that's something we need to work on going forward, statistics, right? So um, there's also a question 
and what is being done about the high levels of unemployment and unemployment for recent graduates in advanced um, degrees, right? Mm -hmm. So, but this also we have, we're not um, quite advanced on this. Um, so we're saying that there will be a study conducted and but there are also um, initiatives um, looking at um, technical and vocational education trainings. So what I guess the PS, who is a former PS of higher education will elaborate on this. Right? Um, so what is the stance, what is the official stance of government with regards to the fertilizer subsidy saga? Um, so this was at a time when we were having issues with, um, with fertilizers and the prices going up and also um, fertilizer being sold across the border and stuff. But I think there was an investigation launch and maybe agriculture can provide further details on that when they're here. Um, so another one is um, how are project lives tracked, uh, particularly for rural infrastructure projects. So we have a um, dedicated unit um, for project monitoring at the Ministry of Finance and it's called the um, Directorate of Aid Coordination. So they're responsible for monitoring and tracking um, well, donor funds and also projects being implemented across the country. So, um, so they normally have, um, have um, joint monitoring visits, but these are done on a quarterly basis, right? So this will look at the rate of implementation of the different projects we have um, in the country. But they also organize um, a project managers forum. So this is done on an annual basis where they have um, specialists from these projects and to have um, discussions on progress, um, project implementation and progress. But they're also thinking of working with the World Bank to have um, a country performance portfolio, uh, portfolio <laughs> review to review the portfolio of the projects we have within the country. Um, so another question is how will the citizens budget be disseminated um, to, those across, to, to those without access and those um, who don't, who don't um, have hard copies of, of the budget, of the citizen's budget. So um, last year, as I mentioned, we had several, a series of talk shows, right? Uh, Mohammed is here. So we had one at GRTS, a uh, couple of GRTS. We also had another one at Star FM and also um, West Coast. So, um, so as I said, that's in partnership with the OSPG. And, but we're also thinking of um, having in-person consultations going forward. So, what are the main data? What are the main challenges cons or concerns with uh, recording and sharing financial data? So, I think the main issue here is um, obtaining information, data collection, right? But getting data from the various sources, not just within government, but across um, society. So, that's something um, we face. But there are also um, system issues. So. Um, we have a system at the office, but um, sometimes the format we want the data to come out, um, well, the form the data should come out in um, is usually hard to get. So um, that's also an issue. But another thing is we have been producing data, but um, we don't think people are using the data we're producing, right? I don't think people are making use of, thank you for your attention. So just to clarify, this is for civil society, but again, they may have questions for government and the critical sectors are invited to answer some of those questions. Yeah? Uh, next off, we, on the, based on the program, we will have the second presentation uh, about this year's present, uh, Citizens Budget 2023. Thank you. And that, that will be presented by Mr. Fofana and uh, and Fad. Um, good morning to you all. My name is Fadma Tadafe from the Budget Directory Ministry of Finance. Okay, our presentation is going to be on the citizens' budget for 2023, and uh, we promise to be brief and quick. For I know that most of uh, most people here are fasting, so. We don't know want to take much of your time. Okay, this is the outline. And on the outline, we have objectives of the citizens' budget, content and spending in the critical sectors. 
So I'm going to take you through the objectives, the content, and I'll allow my colleague to take for, for everyone to look at. So the first one is to break down the budget in a simpler form for easy understanding. As we all know, the um, budget, citizen budget itself, the book, the budget itself is a bulky book. And as Gambians, reading such a book is always a problem. So Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs with its supporting partners do come with every year a portion which is called the citizen budget to make it easy for everyone to have access and read it freely without any issues or, yeah. Then the second one is to provide citizens with simple information to stimulate debate and promote accountability. This part especially goes to my CSO friends. As we all know, CSOs try to help government uh, entities to uh, be on the right path to promote accountability and, step, um, and transparency. So with this, when people are able to read the citizen budget of the main budget, it gives them ideas of what and what is going into the budget or what and what should not be in the budget. So this calls for debate and also try to improve or promote accountability for the next fiscal year. Thirdly, you know, the, it, it, it involves the taxpayers' money. And the layman's voice is very important in this process. This is why with the citizen's budget, the printed copies goes to everyone. So those in the rural areas within the cities do have a copy of it. And some have been reached through community engagements and radio shows. This is to make sure everybody feels part of it so that we could have a very powerful budget that would be efficient for everyone. Lastly, to communicate government objectives. With the citizens' budget, it is just also to let the people know, the citizens know, to know what the government has in store for them for that very physical year. So this also gives us that idea and easily communicate to people what government wants to do this very year or the next year, then people come voicing their parts. With the content, so this year the citizens budget is into five sections. The first one is about introduction. That is what the citizens budget itself, how the budget cycle is developed what and what goes into the budget development. And the second part is about the economic outlook and the assumptions. With the economic outlook and assumptions, we're trying to look at growth for a very, uh, that very fiscal year and taking into the economic tools, employment, exchange rate, uh, inflation, what it's going to look like in that very year. Thirdly, plans for revenue mobilization and spending. Government um, has uh, um, uses tax and donor funding for it, uh, uh, revenue mobilization and spending. So, and the next one is spending in the critical sectors, which will be briefly uh, uh, um, taken by Fatmata here. And we have 13 sectors as critical areas for this very fiscal year. And the last one is new measures and revenue expenditures. Uh, the government created a new uh, um, uh, ministry we used to help in formulating policies that will be helping in um, uh, physical transparency and also to help guide the Ministry of Finance and government sectors on expenditures and revenues. And with this spending in the critical sectors, we uh, whatever is here is um, both the government funding and that of the um, supporting partners. So I will leave that to Fatma to take us through. Uh, so Directorate of Tax and Revenues at the Ministry of Finance. I thought that's a very important point to clarify before they proceed. Thank you. Uh, and there are amounts allocated, and I'm going to read out two of the objectives. The first one is education, with an amount allocated of $4.46 billion, which is divided into two basic education with an amount of $3.57 billion and higher education with an amount of $884 million. Plan activities, first one is construction of first 10 power points for new and existing schools without water facilities 
Second one is construction of 30 classrooms and staff quarters in the rural areas. Then you have the rest. The second one is health, with a total amount of $3.53 billion is allocated. That is forming 9.10% of the approved budget. Planned activities are introduce the National Health Insurance Scheme with funding of $36 million. Second is postgraduate training at the Edward Francis Small. No, because of time. It's okay. Uh, because it's okay. our reaction to whatever you present will be based on truth because you talk the TV. Okay. It's a critical program. Okay. Okay. Education. It's there. One is establishment of two regional TVET skill centers, which is technical vocational educational training centers. Agri -bus business skill training center at Kerawan Mandinka in CRR, CRR South, and multi-purpose skill center in Medina Lamin Kante at CRR South. Operationalization of a school loan scheme. Student loan scheme. Then we have health where the total amount allocated to this sector is $3.53 billion, forming 9.10% of the approved budget. Planned activities are introduce the National Health Insurance Scheme with funding of $36 million, postgraduate training at the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital for healthcare personnel. Third one is develop a civil registration and vital statistics bill to create universal access. The, third, the fourth one is refurbishment, maintenance, and construction of health facilities. And the last one is continue work on the National Public Health Laboratory, National Blood Transfusion Center, and Training Center with $13 million support from the World Bank. Youth and sports. Total amount allocated is $101.56 million, equivalent to 0.26% of the total approved budget. Planned activities are working with development partners to build a regional enterprise business training center for youth and women. Secondly, reconstruction of the national stadium. Third, expansion and strengthening of the youth agricultural services and microprocessing projects to more regions. Last, provision of $8 million in support to youth and women entrepreneurs for enterprise development. $12.5 million in funding. Support youth empowerment with funding of $9.8 million. Provision of support for sports regulations and promotion through $9.8 million in funding. Establishing enterprise formalization centers in URR and LRR. Operationalizing the youth merchandise scheme with $11 million worth of funding. Gender, children, and social welfare. This sector is allocated with an amount of $91.16 million, 0.23% of the approved budget. Planned activities are only two, which are establish a national fund for persons with disabilities and disburse funds $10 million to women, to 100 women groups through the Women Enterprise Fund. Agriculture, allocated with an amount of $3.7 billion, formed 9.66% of the approved budget. Planned activities for agriculture are construction of wells, boreholes, water plants, and reticulation systems with 230.20 million funded. Provision of $100 million to provide fertilizers to farmers and buy granules, crop financing. Provision of $2.5 million for vaccine and disease control for livestock. And lastly, Provision of $42 million for agricultural equipment and machinery through building resilience against food and nutrition insecurity project. Okay, continuation. Provision of $453.50 million worth of agricultural equipment and machinery through projects. Lastly, construction of $53.30 million worth of irrigation infrastructure under the roots project. Fisheries and water resources, allocated with an amount of $593.88 million, 
1.53% of the approved budget. Plant activities for fisheries, uh, provision of fisheries infrastructural facilities for artisanal fisheries. Second, improving fish smoking facilities, construction of 53 boreholes, construction of $10 million worth of fish ponds and water breeding facilities, construction of wells, water points and reticulation system with $10 million, sorry, $10 million worth of funding. Operationalization of the Climate Smart Rural Wash Development Project with $273 million funding. Ministry of Transport, Works and Infrastructure allocated with an amount of $3.90 billion forming 10%, 10.05% of the national budget. Plant activities are maintenance of roads with 30, $38 million funding, implementation of road safety activities with $20 million worth of funding. Third, provision of $75 million as land compensation and $1.62 billion for the OIC road project. Fourth is commencement of phase two of the Kabada Rural Roads, that is Kia Roads, through funding worth $51 million. <laughs> Following up on the en enactment of the National Public Buildings and Facilities Policy Bill, provision of $155 million for Salem Nianija Corridor, Corridor. Petroleum and energy. Amount allocated to this sector is $6.08 billion forming 15.67% of the approved budget. Plans activities are provision and promotion and licensing of blocks for oil deposits. Second is construction of a laboratory for testing of petroleum products. Third, continue the ongoing Gambia electricity restoration and modernization project with $1.1 billion in funding. Implement the Gambia electricity access project worth $447.2 million in 2023. Continuation, implement the water supply project in the Greater Banjul with $162.5 million. Provide investment support for sustainable energy through $4.3 million in funding. Implantation of the Green Mini Grid pro Program with $90.5 million in funding. Lastly, is re replacement of asbestos supplies and water expansion project. Environment, climate change, and national resources have been allocated with $1.42 billion, forming 3.67% of the approved budget. Plant activities are implementing a $46 million project to pro address coastal erosion. Is, I think it's dollars. It's dollars through public private partnership. Embarking on tree planting, including forestry, allocating 200 hectares of land to approximately 500 communities. Trade and employment, allocated amount is 377.69 million, forming 0.97% of the total budget. Planned activities for trade and employment are developing a new national employment and action plan to create 150,000 jobs during the life of the policy. Second, implementing liberalization tariffs, especially on sensitive goods. Setting up of regional offices and consumer protection tribunals in all administrative regions. Conducting investigation to expired foods, products, construction and food that do not meet the required weights and measurements. Conducting an assessment on the education sector to make educational products and services more of it affordable. Tourism and culture. The amount allocated is $387.3 million. $30. Million dollars, yeah. That's 1% of the total approved budget for 2023. Planned activities are Organizing community, community festivals and Janjamburi at, at Janjamburi at Banjo. Creating 30 new jobs at the library through the Moselem at the National Assembly. Rehabilitation of the Mungu Park, $1.2 million, and Musa Mola Memorials. 
an amount of $353 million allocated for the implementation of the diversification and climate resi resilience of the tourism sector. Uh, and with that bring us, brings us to the end of the presentation of the critical se sectors of spending. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. That will be on, so we can we invite, yes, or this one. And National Assembly matters. Uh, I'm informed that this education is supposed to be part of that, but they are on the way, they are not yet here. So we'll start off with health and National Assembly matters. Representatives from the Ministry of Health may call you to the high table. And National Assembly as well. So the panel to introduce themselves. Uh, to take two minutes, introduce themselves and that was our look at the National Assembly service as deputy clerk for legislative business and programs, coordinating four battle trades that's library and research, accurate. Committee Secretariat, the handset who provides the verbatim reports, and the newly established Parliamentary Budget Office. So that is the structure I coordinate at the National Assembly. What precisely deals with um, the forecast the budget, how we relate to other ministries and agencies, especially the Ministry of Finance, on how program-based budget is generated, it's monitored and implemented, uh, how we should conduct oversight of institutions, particularly the control of public funds, which is uh, public financial management uh, too. So that is the responsibility of the legislative business and programs. Division. Thank you. Question. Thank you. But, uh, director Budget, uh, I'm Jibril Jajo, the Director of Planning and Information at the Ministry of Health. Uh, is the director is responsible for the budget preparation and also plans and policy development, as well as uh, uh, investment proposal development for the, for, the, for the health sector as well. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Mr. Jibril. Good morning. My name is Nene Pule, Deputy Director, Director of Gender Equality and Women Empowerment. That's the director responsible for gender issues and the empowerment of women under the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Welfare, one of the biggest ministries, and I can say one of the most important ministries because it has to deal with all the citizens of this country. Thank you. Thank you. National Health Insurance. You know, we've done registration. I don't know whether you're still on the process of it. Um, I mean, when are you expecting to start this? And I mean, what will it entail? Because really, um, citizens... Sorry, Daniel. No, we would appreciate... Uh -huh. for um Gainaco online news my question goes to um the national assembly um my question is to find out whether you can give us an idea how much because there's this constituency development fund and last year i believe was the first year it was implemented you can just correct me where i've made a mistake and to give us an idea how much has been spent on this constituency development fund 300,000 allocated to, to each parliamentarian. And the reason why I'm asking is because I know at least one of them in Honorable Halifa who was not in for it. So that's why I'm trying to find out or else I would have just extrapolated. If you could kindly give us some information. So how much was spent? On the question of my colleague, uh, Flex Dan, whether the nominated members are in um, part of the constituency development fund and uh, what is the essence if, if they are part or what how would they 
be accountable because obviously denominated members does not have a constituency, if I'm correct, if I'm right. Um, my question also goes to um, the gender ministry with regards to the implementation of the Disability Act. Um, how are you, whether you factored um, some amount of money to ensure that I we were working on developing a benefit package so you cannot roll out um, an insurance scheme without uh, a benefit package so we had that benefit package also defined and the validation was done and we are now on consensus uh, building negotiation on how much it will take to actually finance that uh, that 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 benefit package and there's also a series of studies that also supposed to actually inform the implementation of the of the of the of the, of the, of the scheme and uh, one of them was accurate studies and we also have uh, also willingness to pay study and, and and we could not get funding you know on time to actually do a willingness to pay we, we initially relied on uh, uh, one of my staff PhD you know research uh, 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 one of the one of the papers that he, he he wanted to publish was on willingness to pay, but the sample size was not actually you know adequate to be able to you know make uh, proper inferences on that. So we fortunately got support from UNICEF through the so, uh, uh, through the social protection secretariat to conduct a nationwide uh, uh, willingness to pay study, which has started over the over the weekend. It started on Friday. Um, so maybe those around, you know, Western one and two, uh, meaning KMT, Banjul, and and Brikama end, you know, must have seen people crisscrossing your your or your or your vicinity or your compound, try to find, try to interview you in relation to this particular area. So there is, uh, uh, as far as we are concerned, we this willingness to pay will take us for a month to actually do the study, do the analysis, and come out with preliminary studies so we are expected uh, the initial uh, uh, uh focus was the scheme to be launched in in june july 
but uh, that seems to be far fetched. So what we are now uh, 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 now finally putting on the table, meaning it should not pass September. You know, you know all things being equal, but it has been almost getting to two years since the enactment of the of the of the, of the bill, you know, into law. So we are expecting that uh, the insurance will be launched in 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 September, Shalva. And, 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 and we will roll out the scheme across the length and breadth of the country. Thank you. Development Fund. You know, um, if the program was shared with me, we would have provided you with actuals to better prepare for this kind of discussion. Because in Parliament, the procedure is a question for oral answers. The questions are initially sent to the respective ministries, and then they supply the answers or the responses. So when they come back, based on the initial response, they have supplementary questions. So this question is considered as a <laughs> substantive question. So I can provide you with the details later today or tomorrow. But then you give the statistics about 300 allocated to each member. Yes, 300,000. And the insincerity of uh, suppliers in this country, on the whole, every supplier knows every member is allocated to the tune of 300,000. So if you request for quotation, whether the goods or services that they intend to provide amounts to 200,000 or 100,000. They will peg it at the highest common denominator, 300,000. On record, let me say this. That is what is happening in this country. So we can do the arithmetic. And you mentioned that, yes, yeah, uh, Honorable Halifax Salah, Opted out because he initiates his own development programs in his constituency and bill. The idea of the constituency development fund is for the members to initiate some form of development intervention in their constituencies and communities. But then you see, uh, we are of the notion, most standards, that a nominated member does not have a constituency. That is the wrong notion. They have a geopolitical constituency that goes beyond the borders of their geographic, geographic constituencies. Take for example, when we had Neya Sinseka as a nominated member, she does not have a geographic Constituency, but then a geopolitical constituency representing people with disabilities, visually impaired, and you name them. And that geopolitical constituency may constitute about 300,000 people, far beyond if she was from, say, for example, initially from Banyu Central the constituency registered voters in Banyan Central is beyond that. The registered voters in Banyan Central is far below the geopolitical limits. So nominated members have geopolitical constituencies with cuts across the land and breadth of the country. We have initiated in the assembly what we call budget execution tracking. I would have expected on this document. We are launching it just at the end of the first quarter. To have the figures on the 10 most critical sectors, what was allocated, how much was executed. And the executions are they based on their program budget program based budget trajectories 
That's the side. In expenditure tracking. We do that for sectors. And so, as we speak, we're in the planning stage to dispatch the request for sectors to submit. Their expenditures. We can do it independently using the IFMI system. So that they are going to submit to us. And we have a convergence with sectors, especially the social sectors, health, education, agriculture, trade, finance. We may include the Ministry of Gender. So we do expenditure tracking. You would have expected to see that in the budget at the end of the first quarter on are these critical ministries. Because when you look at the 10 critical expenditures, uh, you see debt service is on which pay? At how much? Debt service is number two, 4.3 billion. Uh, Minister of Finance, take note of this. I'm giving you a prescription from a public financial management perspective. Take, for example, IEC, Independent Electoral Commission. We have had the local government elections. 28th of May will still continue. Look at the 25th or 30th of May. What remains in the funds that were allocated to IEC? Where do they keep that money? Do they keep it at the central bank? It is lying in a commercial bank. You know, agencies even some ministries have commercial bank accounts. Parastatal bodies, SOEs. We have introduced the SOE bill. But in the SOE bill, the deficiency there is their funds, there is no prescription that compels them to keep their funds in the public bank, which is the central bank. So domestic debt would increase because we go to domestic banks, they sell TV, treasury bills, we buy and we pay them. It's the money MDAs have kept in commercial banks that they borrow to us they borrow to government. So this. You know, institutions created by government, they don't keep it in the central bank, they keep it in commercial banks. And we are agitating from a public financial money perspective, treasury civil account. If government needs extra, they go to the new board, new level as a What's the logic in that? I'm very, I'm being very critical. It may be controversial to some, but that's the fact and that's the truth. Go ahead. If those monies are kept in the central bank, public fund in the public purse, that debt service 4.3 billion would be not deficit. That's negative. Kept in the central bank, positive. You see, when we were agitating for expenditures on 
child protection, social protection. It was, there was a deficiency already in place because what we needed to do was a budget mapping to map expenditures that directly relate to child protection, social protection, funds for disability, all these things. Because I cannot say, nobody can justify that the total health budget is child protection or social protection sensitive. Even the Ministry of Gender, as they are as a minister, not their total budget is child protection or social protection sensitive or specific. So we need to map out activities that are specific and sensitive to these aspects of child protection, social protection. It is absent. Correct. So we need to do that now. Then we can measure. Because that was the reason why we there was an attempt made in 2014. That was the reason why even in 2013, you know, budget you see Ministry for Children. But the establishment was not there. But the old has been there at least for 10 years. Let me put that on the at least for 10 years. The oil was there. So when we talk about access to public space, we have not created that access because the legal framework, there's a division in the legal framework. We still have not received the uh, Public Buildings Act or bill which is precisely looking at leveling the ground so that everybody have access to space. At least in one sector for persons with disability. We had a meeting in 2014 at the UNDP and UNICEF when we were deciding on how much do we need to increase expenditure, public expenditure on social services particularly child protection and social protection. And you know how the UNDP offices or UN offices are like? You have up to the third floor, I don't know, fourth floor, where UNICEF is. We are coming to discuss issues that relate to persons with disability. Social welfare sent a representative, the person on, was on wheelchair, to access the fourth floor. He said, we're waiting for one person from. He said, why are we waiting this long? He said, the person is at the reception. But we were waiting for 30 minutes. Out of curiosity, we went down to inquire. And saw this person on a wheelchair. The value of the building is the fourth floor. The NDP offices, they don't have a lift. Or around. I said, you're wasting our time. Let's have a meeting downstairs. And the whole day when they were sitting with the person to carry two or three people, he refused. I said, he's right. You see, our problem in this country is about our sincerity to our conscience. Our sincerity to our conscience. And with our budget, they will always blame public officials. And let us be very careful. Let me put this on record. We are, as technicians in government, let us distance ourselves from the politics. We are going the floor. Because one day you will end up like Dr. Bamba Banja as a sacrificial lamb. Manko. The Manko Sayama. On record. 
the last sacrifice. Buloko can deflo, buloko dara deflo. Then some of us will as technicians. We stay out of this politics. If you want to succeed as a country, you see the technicians in this country are the ones moving this country forward. But what this integrates that is when we want to do their work and they want to be technicians as politicians. In humility, of course. In humility. So I want to employ you so that as Mar was saying, we complement as Gambia participate complement what we do in government. At the end of the day, it's the best for government. That's what we are looking for. Thank you. I take one example, which was the fifth legislature, um, Honorable Ndei Yasin Seka. But how about the other nominated members? I understand that was the intention, but now the politics has overshadowed that intention because it's the president that nominates. Currently, you cannot specifically say this nominated member is for this constituency. You understand? So if you disburse the funds, how do they execute the funds to their constituencies? So that's that is my concern. I'm not saying that should have like that is the intention, but now the politics have overshadowed it. Now even the there is no constituent, there is no representative uh, of the disabilities, there is no representative of the young people, there is no representative of other inter interest groups. It's just people who are selected by the president. And if you give them that money, how do you ensure that the money is um, you know, give it to the public. Yes, Deputy Clerk. Yes, you may not know the, uh, because he did not share his initial thoughts on who to nominate or who not to nominate. Because even at the time when Neyasin was nominated, it was not as a result of her disability because it was as a result of her activism, as an activist, gender activist. So the choice was not precisely based on her state of health condition. Moving forward, yes, you may argue other things, but from what I've got, Fatima de Kejawa, nominated as a result of her activism, on human rights and gender. But she implemented in her constituency, where she lives. Then, she opted out this time around. Kebal and Fufana is coming from the business community. And so the criteria is for nominated members. You see, the constitution, this comes from a constitutional perspective. The constitution does not discriminate once you're sworn. So there are two types of members, those elected through the ballot and those nominated by the president. Once they come in, there is no other discrimination. Yeah. They regard it as saved. Not that this one seniors this one, as it obtains in some other jurisdictions, but in the government. And constituency development fund is for members. So whether elected or nominated members, this is. So it's the you. 
But this we need to understand. Now, and yes, there is a lacuna in the constitution how or what criteria is set to nominate. It's just a thinking. But then it's not a compelling statute that you should have somebody from the minority groups, disadvantaged groups, or this category of citizens, or tradesmen. No, the constitution did not go into that. And so you left at the mercy of anybody who has the responsibility and mandate to nominate to decide on the type of people to nominate. But then the prescription stops at you are giving power to nominate, but not compelling you to look at the particular interest group also. No. <laughs> This is getting very interesting. The quality just now your yours and chumbukai. To ray uyu baram, just na peer so kubuge fisi birgam yabi, dawal fufu sa quality just na. Your number one stop shop. Ana sama jigeni, dama bugging and jokma sen no pugarmi. Not the quality just na, amal nen len, I till you touch, dala, pause, abaya you white, amal nen len, I boreda you rough it, boreda yo hamne pur gurnira, at pur jigeni. Amal nen len body scrub yi nga xamna ni da fay defar sen yaram bam nice white faté wuñ fa diwi ana sama jek yu paray quality just na amal nen len fa andi ciuray ciuray yu neex haw spray ak bepp xétu bax bax pour sen bir neek dama né atum ren ji ou sa jëkër méré ku né yow la neex ndax té quality just na ñew na ci dëkk bi pour defar sé yi makeup artist yi bayyu ñen gannaaw ñu ngi len fa amal ay makeup product yu quality waxu len legi ni fofu sa westfield jakarlok monument bi wala nga joko quality jasna si 250124 ak quality jasna taral sa bop taral sa neek white degal sa ala